Okay, welcome everybody. Uh, this is the first class of combinatorial optimization. Um, and uh, I'm going to tell you first a little bit about uh, the goals of what, of what we're going to cover, and then, and then we can talk about some of the specifics of the class. Um, combinatorial optimization is r truly a vast, uh, vast topic. Um, and what we are studying is an optimization problem that is designed to focus on problems that have some kind of combinatorial structure. So graphs are going to be one of the main objects that we're interested in. This is not going to be a course on graph theory, but we'll be interested in natural concepts that come up when you have a graph. A graph, of course, means a collection of uh, nodes and edges uh, joining them. And whenever you have that, you can talk about paths uh, through a graph, uh, flows through a graph. You can talk about um, subsets of edges that you need to remove in order to make two disconnected components. That's, that's something called a cut. Um, and in addition to graphs and all the natural uh, combinatorial style questions that we can study for graphs, uh, combinatorial optimization deals with making schedules, uh, assignment problems, and, and, and many more. So it, it is really a vast topic. Um, and it's a topic that has uh, been around forever, uh, been around for, for a long time in, in uh, applied math, uh, engineering, computer science, but also pure math as well. Um, and there are many different approaches to combinatorial optimization. In, in part, again, it's just a, it's just a vast topic. So the, the main thread in this course, um, rather than kind of being a, uh, a tour of the, of the horizon that just introduces a few of the important problems, we're gonna, do, we're gonna partially do that as well. But, but one of the goals here uh, is to develop a cohesive um, theoretical framework of dealing with uh, combinatorial problems and developing algorithms for them um, by using polyhedral techniques. So in a way, our main workhorse is uh, going to be um, is going to be uh, linear optimization. So let's uh, talk a little bit uh, about that because that that is again going to be really important and 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 uh, part of my goal again is um, to tackle this topic of combinatorial optimization, which in, in many ways does not have a cohesive unifying thread as much as, say, convex optimization does. Um, and rather than, again, show you just some of the gems of combinatorial optimization, focus on those which relate to one main underlying, underlying theory. So uh, linear optimization is, is, is really going to be the, the, the recurring theme in all of this. Um, as a basis for designing algorithms, as a basis for analyzing combinatorial uh, optimization problems, their approximability, and, and so on. Um, so linear optimization is uh, the problem of minimizing a linear function subject to linear constraints. We're going to see this, we're going to encounter this in many different forms. Let me just write this one. And of course, this is a subset of convex optimization where we want to minimize a convex function subject to x in a convex set, uh, which, so everything convex. Linear functions are convex. In fact, they're also concave. That's why we can minimize or maximize. And, uh, and this, uh, an ax less than b describes a convex set. So uh, this, is a, this is a very small subset of the wealth of problems you can describe using convexity, but nevertheless, it is uh, extremely important, and partly a, a picture tells this story. So, you know, you've all seen this before. So this is my set ax less than b. It's this, uh, it's this shape here. You can see I made it by intersecting half planes. And the main uh, conceptual part here is that if we are optimizing in a particular direction, we know. And again, we'll, 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 see, we'll see these things in more detail in future lectures. But we know that we're going to have uh, an, an optimal solution at an extreme point. And if we take optimal uh, values at extreme points, it really means 
that we're optimizing over extreme points. So we started out with something that's convex, therefore continuous optimization. We can leverage all the tools from continuous optimization, but if we're clever and we play our, our cards right, we're actually now optimizing over something that has a common, potentially combinatorial structure. It's a discrete structure. We're looking at the corners of, uh, of, of this set. And uh, so this is one of the reasons that linear programming is li linear programming, linear optimization um, are so important. Another important um, reason is that we are interested in describing uh, combinatorial problems, paths through a graph, subsets. These mean that there are, uh, when you're talking about subsets of something, or again, paths through a graph, you have exponentially many choices. We need for any theory to be even initially satisfying, let alone uh, developing efficient algorithms, we need to be able to say that we have an efficient or succinct representation of the problem uh, at hand. So if corners are gonna, what, are, are gonna be what represents our, our combinatorial complexity, then linear programming is only a useful tool if it can succinctly represent uh, an exponential number of corners. And indeed, this is the case. Um, so unlike, unlike two dimensions. In two dimensions, if you draw a shape like I just did, the number of corners is equal to the effort it took to draw that shape, the number of, of sides that I had. But and you can easily see that if I draw two n constraints, this describes two to the n uh, corners. This is a very simple, very simple example, but in a way it's a basis of a lot of what we're going to do. A basis because if our variables take values that are either zero or one, it's really a selection problem. Again, you're making an assignment, you're selecting a subset, you're choosing which ed you're choosing edges, something like that. So that's why this is important. And at least this tells us that this is a path worth exploring further. We, th there is the, there is the uh, potential for us to be able to describe an exponential collection of objects with a small number. This is just 2n. Uh, constraints. So, so, so far so good. Th this is promising. And what we've basically said is that linear optimization being a subset of convex optimization allows us to develop all of those tools. It allows us to use duality. It, we're going to make great use of certificates of optimality. This is something that you only have in the presence of convexity. Um, but on the, on the flip side, it, it's going to be a tool because of this property of taking optimal values at extreme points for studying uh, for, for, for attacking uh, combinatorial problems. This is uh, a rough outline, it's, it's also in the syllabus, of, of how I see um, this course. The first three, and, and again it's tentative, uh, this, um, depending on the pacing and, 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 how fast, uh, and how fast we go. We're going to spend the first several lectures talking about linear optimization. This means developing intuition about the geometry of, uh, of polytopes and polyhedra, um, understanding algorithms, in particular the simplex method, but uh, also the ellipsoid method for solving linear optimization, and also developing the theory of duality, um, certificates of optimality, complementary slackness, all of these tools and in, in, in getting a, an initial flavor of how they can be used um, for linear optimization. So that's going to be the first Part. In the second part, we are going to use these tools to attack certain problems, certain specific problems in combinatorial optimization. Partly, we're going to be talking about these problems because they're interesting in their own right. Uh, bipartite and non-bipartite matching are fundamental problems uh, in combinatorial optimization. We're going to define what those problems are, but you know, just to just to say what. Uh, just to say what they are, if you have if you have a graph on four nodes, um, then a matching is any collection of edges that don't that don't intersect, and that's just because you're matching pairs. So, for example, this would be a matching um, that actually touches all of the all of the all of the nodes of the graph. We're gonna we're gonna talk about bi uh, what bipartite means and so on. So. I'm not expecting that you, perhaps many of you already know this, but I'm not expecting that 
that uh, you've taken a course in, in graph theory. So on the one hand, these, these tools, they, these problems are important on their, on their own right, but also it's going to be a very convenient vehicle for us to introduce some of the key concepts, such as total unimodularity, total dual integrality, also just the general framework of primal dual algorithms and using certificates and using, using duality of, of linear programming. Um, so this is going to be a significant portion of the class. Part three is uh, similarly uh, going to be leveraging all of the tools, ellipsoid algorithm, uh, all of the polyhedral combinatorics and linear programming ideas that we'll have developed into that point. Uh, and we're going to be focusing on submodularity, um, understanding what submodular function is, and then concepts like continuous extensions and algorithms and approximation algorithms for... Uh, for, for minimizing, maximizing um, submodular functions, submodular functions subject to constraints and, um, and so on. Parts one, two, and three are, uh, will, will likely take the bulk of this class. Um, and then uh, for part four and part five, extended formulations and, uh, and randomized rounding, and you can see the catch-all and other topics, uh, in a way it depends on, on uh, where we are how much time we have we have left, but uh, I don't want any of you to get nervous that we're going to run out of material. This is an, a truly inexhaustible, um, inexhaustible topic. So this is uh, more or less the uh, the outline of the, the, the topics that we're going to be covering. Uh, the main tools we're going to be using are uh, linear algebra. Um, optimization and duality. So I, I do expect that a lot of you have uh, had some reasonable exposure to this in the past. And of course, there's in general going to be um, some sophisticated topics, but, but no real um, hammers uh, that, we, uh, that we need. In terms of uh, some of the administrative aspects of this class, uh, we're going to have homeworks every two to three weeks. Um, I put in the syllabus five homeworks, so I'll, I'll stick to that, but th this is, uh, again, it, because it depends on the pacing and where we are, we, we, haven't, we don't have specific dates, but uh, this is what, what, what we're, what we're going to shoot for. And then there is a final project for the class, um, and the idea here is for you to explore a topic that we didn't have time to touch. So it could be going deeper in one of these areas, um, or or perhaps just choosing a, a related topic in combinatorial optimization that we that we didn't uh, get to touch and write an expository paper about that. So uh, an expository paper means that I don't expect that you will make a new discovery or have something publishable. On the other hand, if you if this is related to your research, you you have something you want, you have some ideas, um, that of course is uh, a, a very um, welcome. Um, possibility and, and opportunity that i will be happy to discuss. But um, the goal here is for you to take the tools that you've learned and read a reasonably sophisticated paper and essentially provide an original exposition of some aspect of those results. And you know, we'll, we'll talk about what this, um, what this means. Um, again, there are infinitely many uh, references here. Uh, I have put some on the on the syllabus. Uh, I think that the, just to just to repeat them here, uh, the book on an introduction to linear optimization by Bertimus and Tsitsiklas is uh, is 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 a very useful um, book. Uh, combinatorial optimization. Uh, by Papa Dimitriou and Stieglitz is uh, another useful book. And also this particular book is, uh, is a Dover edition, so you can get it for, uh, for, for uh, quite affordable on, on Amazon. Um, and uh, there's a book by uh, Grachel, Lovash, and Shriver um, called Geometric Algorithms. and combinatorial optimization. This has a lot of, this has a, a, a kind of a tour of the horizon of combinatorial optimization, but it also has a lot of, it has many details about uh, the, um, 
the ellipsoid algorithm. And then finally, the, th the, th the third author of this previous book, uh, uh, Lex Shriver, has written a book uh, called Combinatorial Optimization, which is a, a, a massive three-tome um, collection that, that, is, uh, that can be a very useful reference. Um, so, you know, I think of all of these uh, just combining affordability and, uh, and the, the breadth of things that it covers, I would, I would recommend if you, if you are a type of person who really wants to have a paper copy of a book, the book by, uh, by uh, Christos Papadimitriou um, and, and Kenneth Stieglitz on uh, combinatorial optimization is, is, is a good option. But the class will be self-contained in the sense that I'm not expecting that uh, you fill in details from, um, from these books or read chapters or anything, or anything like that. So uh, I'm going to stop here. Um,